Very few folks have the privilege to boast of having a PCIe Gen 4.0 SSD. If you are wondering what kind of life-changing experiences a Gen 4.0 SSD entails, then allow us to shed some light on the insane speeds that you can experience. File transfer speeds aside, a super-fast SSD can really lower your game load times and help keep you immersed in whichever video game you happen to be playing. For this, you'll need a sweet gaming PC and that's where we come in. You'll need to upgrade to a good graphics card a CPU that's great at gaming and a super fast SSD to keep your game level load times to a minimum. Before we move on to checking out the components, let's take a look at the prices for which these components were obtained. Like the previous builds, this is an upgrade and not a fresh build. So you'll be retaining certain components and peripherals from our existing computer. You certainly don't want to ditch the gaming mouse and keyboard that you've grown to love after all these years, do you? The AMD Ryzen 5 3600 XT is a hexa-core processor with multi-threading which nets you 12 logical threads. For gaming, that hits the spot. What's life without a little ray tracing? We are going with a Zotac RTX 3060 Ti for the graphics card in this build. It's current gen and destined to last you a couple of years. We are picking a B550 motherboard since we need PCIe Gen 4.0 support, 4 RAM slots, 1 PCIe X16 slot for the graphics card and supports the CPU we've picked. Most games need between 8 to 16 gigabytes of RAM, so we are going to err on the side of caution and go with a 16 GB DDR4 dual channel RAM kit with a frequency of 3200 MHz. Western Digital has sponsored this PC build and that's why we've opted for the WD Black SN850 which is a PCIe Gen 4.0 SSD that can deliver over 11 times the speed of Western Digital's best SATA SSDs. With up to 7000 MB of read performance and up to 5300 MB of write performance for this 1TB model, the WD Black as an 850 reduces the overhead time for data to be transferred because there's less time spent waiting. Since WD Black SN850 shall be our primary storage and we'll be installing our operating system and the most frequently played games on this drive. A super fast PCIe Gen 4.0 NVMe SSD such as the WD Black SN850 helps the OS and all your video games load up super quick so that you can spend more time playing and less time waiting. You obviously need a lot of storage space and we've all got hard drives in our PCs. So we aren't going to be spending any extra on our secondary storage. In this build, we are using our existing WD Black 1TB SATA hard drive. The overall power consumption of this build comes to less than 430 watts. So we are opting for the Corsair CV550 which gives plenty of headroom for future upgrades. We are going to be installing all of our components into an NZXT H510 Elite chassis which is known for its modest yet classy aesthetics. Start off by clearing everything within your chassis. This includes your old PC components which may or may not be working. Give your old components a fair goodbye and prepare yourself for an upgrade to something much more powerful. Open your chassis by removing both the side panels. Find all the accessory boxes that might have come within the chassis box. You'll find all the screws needed for your build within these accessory boxes. Also, don't throw away the existing screws from your old system. You'll need those. Whenever in doubt, refer to the user manual of your chassis to see what all screws and peripherals came with the chassis and where they're supposed to be installed. Start off by removing the rear IO shield since that's suited for your older motherboard. Install the power supply next and ensure that its cooling fan is not blocked. Follow up by routing cables through the rear panel. Remove the motherboard from its packaging and lay it down on its box or on a stable surface. Start your build by installing your new CPU followed by the stock cooler that comes in the box. As you can see, it has thermal paste applied already, so you won't be needing that. Once your CPU and cooler are secure, proceed with clicking your RAM modules in place. Next up, we'll be installing the WD Black SN850 1TB NVMe SSD. This motherboard comes with its own M.2 shield. Align the WD Black SN850 NVMe SSD with the M.2 port and plug it in. Now, screw the SSD securely in place using the plate provided. With the CPU, RAM and SSD now installed, place the motherboard onto the standoffs and screw it in place. Plug in all the power connectors and the SATA SSDs or hard drives that you have lying around. It's handy to do this at this juncture because the ports 
tend to get blocked by the graphics card, so accessing them later becomes a challenge. Which also brings us to the graphics card. Make sure you have removed the two expansion plates at the rear of your chassis to make room for the graphics card. Place the 3060Ti in the first X16 PCIe slot and secure it in place using one or two screws. Once the card is plugged in and secured, connect its PCIe power connectors. Use zip ties to tie up all the cables along the offside of the chassis. Some cable management goes a long way towards ensuring good airflow and making the chassis appear pretty. Speaking of airflow, this is the right time to set up your PC's cooling fans. Each chassis appears more or less the same, but you should always examine the airflow path properly to ensure that all your components get plenty of air to keep the thermals in check. Your chassis will usually come with a fan or two installed, but we prefer to have at least 3 to 4 cooling fans in a gaming PC of this caliber. Once that's done, plug your fans into the 4 pin fan headers on your motherboard. The last thing left is to connect the cables for the front panel I.O. connectors onto the motherboard. Refer to the chassis manual and the motherboard manual to understand the mating of these connectors. That's it. You put everything together and now it's time to power it on and take it out for a spin. Plug in your keyboard, mouse and monitor. Plug in the PSU and switch your PC on by tapping the power button on the PC. If the system powers on, you can safely close the chassis. And on that note, you've completed your upgrade. Now install the operating system followed by all hardware drivers and then you can install your software and games. Let's look at what kind of speeds we are getting with the WD Black SN850 NVMe 1TB SSD. We'll be using Crystal Deskmark and Atto to run the benchmarks on the WD Black SN850 and the WD Black SATA hard drive. We see that the SN850 finished the benchmark with read speeds of 7070 megabytes per second and write speeds of 5242 megabytes per second. Compared to the WD Black SATA hard drive, the WD Black SN850 1TB NVMe SSD performs 35 times better. Since we are also going to be gaming on this PC, we couldn't let this video end without showing you some video game benchmarks. We ran Metro Exodus, Battlefield 5, Shadow the Tomb Raider, Doom Eternal, Assassin's Creed Valhalla and Red Dead Redemption 2. Let's take a look at all the scores again. The lowest we've seen was 92 FPS in Metro Exodus which had ray tracing switched on at 1080p resolution. Even on 1440p resolution, we managed to get 59 FPS with the graphics set to Ultra. Metro Exodus is a pretty beefy video game with great visuals that's enhanced with hardware accelerated ray tracing. We managed to get 160 FPS in Battlefield 5, 170 FPS in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 217 FPS in Doom Eternal, 74 FPS in Assassin's Creed Valhalla and lastly, we saw over 86 FPS in Red Dead Redemption 2. If you followed our video and built your PC, don't forget to take a few selfies with your new PC and send it over to us. Remember to tag us in your PC build posts on Instagram and Twitter. Thank you for watching.